Hey YouTube, what's going on? Today I'm at a place that I've always wanted to visit. I'm at the Battle of Little Bighorn National Park and Monument. Uh, it's a place that has a pivotal moment in American history and I've always wanted to check it out ever since I was a little kid and I can't wait to get in there and see what's going on. So what do you say we uh, get the camera out and go check it out? So here's this very large veteran cemetery as soon as you walk into the park. Um, kind of give you a lay of the land here with what we're looking at. All this is Custer National Cemetery. Um, so this is a veteran cemetery for sure. I don't think all of these folks battled or perished in the Battle of the Bighorn, but um, boy, it is very impressive. And the actual monument and last stand hill is up there. And I believe different parts of the park you can drive to. So I'm gonna go check out the uh, Last Stand Hill. And these little flowers grow everywhere I hear, and they're really beautiful. I don't know the name of those, but uh, here's a whole bunch of them growing over here. Very, very pretty. So I've wanted to visit this place several times. I've actually drove past it four times. Uh, twice one way out and twice one way back. And I always told myself that the next time I come through here, um, come hell or high water, I'm gonna stop and see this place. And it's about 1500 miles from my home and not a lot of people are lucky enough to uh, have the opportunity to visit such a wonderful place so far from home but um, you know I like to travel and I've been through this stretch of I-90 several times now in my life and every time I came by here before uh, it was nighttime and the park was closed so uh, I spent the area to rest or spent the night at a rest area last night just to be sure that I could uh, come here this morning and see this really beautiful place We'll check this little trail out. Um, I'm not exactly sure. It doesn't look like it goes up to the top there, but they certainly know how to get your attention. Steep grades, uneven surfaces, and rattlesnakes. Um, I've yet to see a rattlesnake in the wild, and I am in rattlesnake territory. So I have a feeling that on this trip, at some point or another, I may see a rattlesnake. And if I do, I'm gonna give it a wide berth. That is for sure. I'm just gonna go down here and check out a couple of these graves and head to the top. Here's the grave of an Indian warrior who fell at the battle, defending the Lakota way of life. You know, the lines between friend and enemy are usually blurred. Um, depending on your perspective, Custer was either a hero or a villain, or perhaps a little bit of both. Um, but there's no doubt that he was uh, quite cocksure and a little full of himself. And while some people may believe that he got what he had coming, certainly a lot of men in his company did not. Here's the site of uh, two soldiers from the Seventh Cavalry. And it says that they fell here, but I do not think that they're buried here. I think they eventually moved all the burials up to uh, Last Stand Hill. But uh, looks like this is where they made a skirmish line along the edge of this ridge. I don't know if you can quite tell the terrain of the land right here, but 
they would have tried to use the terrain to their advantage as much as possible but they were outnumbered I think at least 10 to 1 if memory serves me correct something like 2,000 Sioux warriors and there are a lot of stories about how the battle took place and the accounts of Custer's you know heroic deeds but really um, they were slaughtered in just a matter of minutes from the best that we can tell from history well, it looks like this trail goes quite a ways, and I want to go see the last stand hill. So I'm going to go up there and join these people up there at the top. You know, you always think when you get here that, oh, I'm going to be the only one there looking at this, no matter how early you get here. Um, and it doesn't look like they allow people onto the site, and I'm sure that's a good thing. So let's go join these guys and check out where Custer made his final stand. So as the battle progressed, you know, they were falling left and right, and they were really just trying to do the best they could. But, you know, they would have tried to find one of the highest points around, and this is definitely it. Um, I can see why they would have wanted to use it. It's a natural, you know, it looks like a natural uh, fortification. Um, but the Sioux were coming at them from all sides. And, you know, um, back in the 90s, they did a battlefield detectives here. And it was really fascinating. If you get a chance, watch it. Um, they metal detected the area and they were able to tell that a lot of the Sioux were picking up the firearms of the soldiers and turning and firing the other way. Probably a lot of those guys right there, and I believe off in the distance down in that area somewhere is where the Sioux encampment was. And imagine the feeling those guys had when they come over the ridge and they see a massive encampment down there. So beautiful. The last thing I'm on. A serene place. You can really feel the energy here if you believe in that sort of thing. Straight ahead. Right there. That's where Custer is. some wind. It's hard to avoid up in here in this area. See, you probably heard me uh, get on that kid earlier. Jumped on him a little bit because he said T.W. Custer, and I completely forgot that his brother fell to his brother's grave. is right there in front of his, and his name was T.W. Custer, so good on you, kid. What a poignant thing, you know, two brothers dying side by side. What was going through their minds? I'm just going to 
sit here and uh, kind of take this in for a moment. So, just to clarify a few things, uh, Custer is not actually buried here. He is buried at West Point. Uh, and I'm not sure if any of them are actually buried here. a few things is that a lot of people will climb all the way up here eager to see what happens and then once they get up here they, they end up almost speechless everyone who's come up and stood beside me has just kind of uh, stood here in silence um, it's really hard not to be reverent when you come to this place weather today. Uh, the temperature in Wyoming and Montana has been about 95 degrees for the last two weeks, and today it's about 79. And I mean, it's just perfect. I couldn't ask for a better day to be here. I'm feeling really lucky right now. I was just telling me off in this direction, there's a lot more stones than there are here, and even way off in the distance down there. Um, off in this direction is where Reno and his men were. And I'm pretty sure that they were uh, hiding at the point of battle. There's a lot of, uh, you know, controversy about re what Reno was doing at the battle. But uh, when you're out number 10 to 1 and death is assured, you know, it's hard to blame someone for wanting to protect themselves uh you know put yourself in their shoes um i try not to speak ill of the dead so you know these folks did the best they could a little bit of rain coming down um but it's not going to bother me none i've had 100 degree weather the last two weeks a little bit of rain is going to be about perfect Looks like people have tied some things on this tree right here and I'm not sure what the significance of that is if any but uh, perhaps something to do with a Native American tradition would be my guess but uh, if I find anything out about that I'll, I'll update it um, but the battle if you're looking on the distance the battle kind of come right this direction right towards us and they were skirmishing the entire way and then right there is where they made their last stand. It's so captivating. I almost just started walking in that direction over there. And, you know, it goes on for several miles. But uh, I think I'm going to head back and get my van and go that direction. Um, but I've been to several different battlefields. Gettysburg Battlefield, um, Chickamauga. And, you know, this really... I'm not going to say it's more significant, but it, you know, this has more of a, uh, a personal feel for me. Um, I was just always intrigued by Custer and his story. Um, saw paintings of him as a little kid. And, you know, like the guy standing there with his red hair and his buckskin. Although, you know, that's a little bit of fiction. I'm not sure he was wearing buckskin at the battle here. He may have been, but... Um, folks, like the $25 is well worth it. Um, I recommend getting the National Parks Pass and visiting Yellowstone, which isn't too far from here. And really, just in general, um, visit as many national parks as you can on that pass because the entry fee to here is $25 and the pass is $80. So even if you came here two or three days in a row, the past is already paid for itself.
not exactly sure what this little area is over here, but it's on the way back to the van and it looks really cool, so we're gonna go check it out. history sitting bowl here. Well folks, I think I'm gonna call it a day here. Um, while there are other parts of the park that I would definitely like to explore, and they are worth exploring, um, it's really starting to fill up here. And the traffic down in that general direction is just really bad. And I don't know if I really want to go through all of that or not. Um, I, I got to see what I came here to see. Um, definitely worth the trip. Uh, do not drive past this place without visiting it if you're absolutely able to visit. Um, one of the most serene, uh, reverent places I've ever been in my life. Um, it was everything I expected it to be. And I just can't say enough about it. Uh, I'm just really in awe right now um, of the beauty of the land and the history behind it and just the way the people well, were so respectful of the area. Um, but I try to do a little bit of everything on this channel, but generally has to do with the outdoors. So if you like this video and you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, um, I'm always visiting parks, state parks, national parks, and just doing general outdoor exploration. Uh, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. And this is Jason at Exploring Intuition signing off, and I'll see you next time.